Hi everyone, this is um, part of the uh, exam preparation series for TCU accounting. Um, today I'm going to be looking at section B. There it is. Now, um, this information, that this is what I'm going to show you, but let me just uh, first of all refer you to where this information comes from. So here's the accounting task site. You'll notice a whole lot of things here. Um, at the bottom, which you should already know about, is supporting documents including external assessment material. Um, when you click on that, you've got a whole lot of options here. Um, and I'm looking at this external assessment specifications. You might have looked here before, before exam papers, and you can see assessment reports, which have got all the answers. So this important part here that I'm going to look at to tell you what type of questions I'm going to go through with you in section B. So the first one is, is a series of general journal entries and I will go through uh, 2017 question 4 with you. In question 4 you get a choice. You either have to analyse um, entries in the, in the ledger accounts or calculate the gain or loss in disposal or calculate the provision for doubtful debts. Right. So what I'm going to show you today, um, it's going to be a rather lo uh, long video but but anyway, hopefully it'll be useful to you. Um, that is to go and go through the general journal entries. That's for 2017. Um, and I'm going to go and through all the choices that you possibly could get. And you can see I've taken these from previous exams. Okay, let's get started. Here's question three from 2017. You get a number of general journal transactions you have to do. It's about 10, and you have to have to uh, provide general journal entries um, where there's GST. Obviously, you have to talk about them. You have to enter the dates and novations, so that's important. Um, and you have to um, inset your uh, credit entries, and I'll show you how to do that. So that's the question itself there that we have to do. So my working document is here. Right? So there, there it is there. There's all the transactions. And what I've done, I've prepared my general journal. And what I've done in advance here too, uh, for demonstration purposes, I have included the instructions there that you can see there um, as my narration. And while we're talking about narrations, I all should have um, brackets around them and a line underneath them, but only underneath here where the description occurs, not all the way there or there, you'll get marked down for that. All right. So you can see I've put them all in and now I'm going to go through them one by one and talk you through. Now um, you should also look at par other past exams to see whether there's any commonality of other types of entries that are um, made uh, or asked for, um, but 2017 is a good general um, guide. So let's look at the first one. So we, we, we um, sold to inventories to MPAL on credit. So um, it's accounts um, receivable, MPAL. Um, that person is a debtor to us, or accounts receivable, if you like. Um, and that is always going to be a debit item. You can see it's for 715. Um, we do have to uh, recognise the GST as well as the sales. Now, the, what, what you should do here is to indent um, your credit entry. The sales is going to be um, 10 eleventh of this entry. Remember, you have got to divide this figure by 11 to get the GST clearing. Let me just do that first. There we are, GST clearing. If you divide that figure by um, 11, you'll get 65. So by my maths here, we should have sales 650, GST clearing 465. Both sides equal. We've got two credit entries and one debit entry, but they're equal to one another, so we're ready to go. Now, as part of this also, we had a cost of um, goods sold. 520. Um, let me put, put that in this quickly. Um, whenever we do this type of entry, um, we must have 
um, to be nice cost of goods sold I'm being lazy here and putting that in straight away um, you should write in cost of goods sold um, we've taken some items out of inventories okay so that recognizes that we've got a credit to inventories which reduces the inventories and we've got this cost of goods sold on June the 6th we purchased um, inventory on credit from Midland Appliances so we've got inventories that we purchased which is an asset um, that is 451 now we've got to recognize the GST again so I'll type that in as quickly now this item needs to be needs to be divided by 11 that's 41 you can see that I've made a mistake because the inventories should be 9 or 10 11ths of that that's a remainder and we purchase this on credit so it's accounts payable for 451 that's a total there right let's just check that after I've made my little mistake so there you have it inventory is 410 the GST on that is on the debit side because you're going to um, have that as a rebate back and there's 451 for that uh, for accounts payable let's look at the next one uh, we accept the return from MPOW that's relating to this initial sale so in, in a simple form we should um, reverse um, that transaction or reverse part of it so it's $55 um, so the way I think about this is that we've got to re um, reverse this entry up here so everything's going to be a little bit around there's a minor complication though um, sales we don't debit sales but we debit sales returns don't forget that sales returns it does say for 55 but there's a GST component included in it okay GST clearing of 5 um, and what we do we're going to credit this person's account for 55 we also must recognize that we've now got some extra um, inventory in our inventory if you like because we they've been returned and it says it's th that cost is 38 um, so what happens here that cost of goods sold is reduced by $38 so you can see it's a mirror image of this entry up here except that we've got this account called sales returns and we don't debit sales all right on June the 12th we purchased some office equipment for 1870 um, that's got GST included as well so um, we've got office equipment as an asset account that's on the debit side um, we've got another item um, we must claim back our GST let's put that in and we um, have got this person office supplies or business office supplies that we're going to owe money to so that's a total of 1870 that we owe money to and we must divide that amount by 11 and we get 170 that's the GST and therefore obviously the remainder was how much the office equipment cost so let's check 1700 plus 170 and 1870 that's all good so on June the 14th we paid some insurance GSC was included in that as well so we've got insurance uh, we've got GST clearing Stick that in there. and we paid um, paid it by cash there we are cash at bank um, I usually put the gross amount in first and what I've got to do now is to again divide this by 11 and to get the GST 
that GST amount is 165 so therefore the insurance itself was 1650 again doing check that plus that equals that in the 18th we made a mistake um, this is where I'll take the time um, and perhaps on, on a scrap piece of paper to work out exactly where the entry is um, and then you need to reverse that if it's in on the debit side you, you then use a credit and vice versa let's have a look what happened here so with this particular entry you've actually got to do two entries which makes it harder but let me let me just uh, tell you what happened and where the mistake is so um, they said that um, they received um, they thought they received some some um, some rent or some interest and it should should have actually been an expense but they were quoted it like this so there that's what's currently there so what we have to do we have to rectify that mistake firstly by reversing this one so interest revenue should be debited okay interest revenue should be debited to get rid of it because it shouldn't be there um, similarly we must uh, then um, also reverse this one By 300 and what should have happened is this interest expense they got it totally wrong and that should be a debit um, and cash at bank should be a credit in this instance because it's um, an expense and not a revenue so you can see that uh, the cash at bank account would have been out by $600 the total effect of this rather silly mistake but I worked it out by putting in the initial uh, mistake and then saying okay I've got to reverse that out and then I had to correct it it's quite a difficult entry so let's have a look at when Maisie withdrew inventory for own use so the first thing we think of is drawings and that was a total of $308 um, we've purchased those inventories so there was a GST component that we were going to claim as a rebate therefore we must um, now take that out because we um, uh, uh, have got no right to cl keep claiming that rebate therefore this in instance it's on this side um, and we take out our inventories and that's $280 let's look at June 28th uh, we arranged a loan so we uh, received some cash at bank so it goes from the uh, in a bank account for twelve thousand dollars, and we have to recognise our bank loan to um, X Y Z Bank. X Y Z Bank. That's simple credit there for um, twelve thousand um, dollars. On June the 29th, we had a um, cash sale. Remember before we had a, um, a credit sale so in this instance uh, we received some money cash at bank um, that amount was for three hundred and fifty two dollars um, there's a GST component to it that's GST clearing the amount that we must pay the government that's going to be um, thirty two dollars and we've got sales of $320 there we are an element of this that we must also remember but that we were sold some goods so therefore we recognize the element there and our inventories went down to the total of $220 so we'll put that in so as before quite easy here we have to do a balance day adjustment on June the 30th. It's met expense, it relates to the next accounting period. So it is a prepaid expense. So we debit prepaid expense $570. And we're going to credit spent expense $570. Okay, there you have your general journal entries. 
Um, there will be some others that are um, um, that could be asked in this section. <coughs> I've just gone through the process there for you for for the 2017, um, and they're fairly typical of the types of entries that you get. But obviously, from year to year, they're going to be different. Now I'm going to do, do the 2013 exam where I'm going to analyse ledger entries. This is what the actual exam paper looks like. <coughs> it's it, it's not in column or format, so what I've done is transferred that information uh, using the column or format. So there it is. So it's asking us to analyse these uh, transactions or with these entries and to work in reverse to see what transaction led to these entries being made in the industry adjustment and introduced to control account. The best way to look at it is to say okay the inventory adjustment account was debited for $210 and this other particular reference relates to the corresponding credit entry. So this is what would have happened down here below. So we would have debited that account, 210, that's what that means. And the corresponding um, credit entry is there. So you can see that the corresponding entry is there down there. We're asked to analyse this. So <coughs> simply in the answer, you would say that um, we had to um, adjust inventories uh, due to a stock take. Uh, that revealed a loss of um, $210. So, so if you had, to, if you, if you saw that transaction, okay, what, what, what would you have to do? You'd have to make that general journal entry, and they, those entries would then be posted into the adjustment account there, and there. So that's this process I would um, encourage you to work through. Let's look at B. Introduced control account was debited by accounts payable um, by $7,000 and the corresponding credit amount goes to cash accounts payable. So that means that we would have debited inventory control account by $7,000 and the corresponding credit entry is that. So that would have led to the that would have been due to purchase of inventories uh, either by cash or on credit. Okay, that's what this accounts pay will mean. So we purchased some inventories, we've got some extra ones, yep. Either uh, we paid cash for them or uh, we, pay, we, we bought them on credit and later on we pay for them. That's B. C here. Um, hopefully it's fairly straightforward, but in this instance we credited introduced control account, therefore we would have debited cost of goods sold. So that relates to uh, the cost price of um, selling goods, okay, uh, and that was $5,000 obviously. So this, the, the sale price might have been a lot higher, or would have been a lot higher, and this is the cost price of the goods that we sold. In part D, what that is, it relates to uh, a credit to the uh, introduced control account, therefore it's debit drawings. So as soon as you have that in your head, so debit drawings, it must have been a drawings of, of some sort. It is drawings of uh, inventories um, by the owner. If I've gone too quickly on this, then in each instance you should uh, reconstruct a general journal entry like I've done below. So um, to summarise for part D, um, the debit would have been to drawings um, for $50 and the credit here has gone to Nutri's control down there. Inventories account there. Right. So debit, drawings, credit, inventories, control. <coughs> so if you then look at that at 
look at that it means there's drawings by of entries by the owner hopefully that's been useful uh, to you um, I'm now I'm going to skip to the next um, question type which is calculating uh, loss or gain on disposal and that was in 2016 exam um, which is here so that's the example um, here you'll see that, that the information is presented both in T format as well as the um, the columnar structure and that's what I'm going to show you um, using um, this question here oh, it's the same question I've just um, put it on a different file so there's information the first thing we have to do is to be asked to calculate gain or loss and disposal now you'll see here what I've done I have uh, prepared a little list and that's how I'm going to work out I need to put in some information I need to calculate some information in order to get to this last stage a loss uh, on disposal or if it's it also could have been a gain depending on um, whether our written down value was less than what we got for it let's just work through it so in the first instance I want to put down what the cost price of my truck is you need to find the historic value there it is 720,000 so let's put that in um, the accumulated depreciation of the truck now if I simply go here right um, I've got to be careful that gets uh, calculated every financial year but we sold the truck on the 31st December which is another six months on from there so um, I have to calculate the extra accumulated depreciation um, as at the date of disposal so it's another six months um, it's six it's twelve thousand dollars for the whole year therefore it's going to be six thousand dollars for half a year which means that now I've got thirty thousand uh, dollars accumulated depreciation so that's charged for six months add it on to that and get thirty thousand so my total accumulated depreciation is thirty thousand dollars I've got to work out what my written value is now I do that by subtracting that from that um, and I get uh, $90,000 so that's what I believe the value of the truck is however we only got $80,000 for it that's the information that was given up here so that means that we've made a loss of $10,000 how did I work that out well we thought it was 90 we only got 80 Right. therefore we've got the a loss on disposal had the written down value been less it would have been a gain but in this instance it was more therefore we've made a loss on disposal so there is um, that information there so worked that out um, and then the next question is how does it look in the income statement it says accounting reports um, you must realize that it's uh, either going to be um, report it as a gain therefore we put it as an operating revenue right it's a gain on disposal but we've got a loss so therefore that will go in as a general admin expense here for ten thousand dollars there is a slight technicality if it was a delivery van which has been used as part of your selling distribution expenses then the loss would also be then recognized as a a selling and a distribution expense rather than general admin expense like I've shown here but you must be aware of that little technicality so that is this type of question now lastly what I'm going to do is show you how to calculate the provision for doubtful debts and um, the corresponding question that was in 2017 so let's check that one out so this is the paper here um, that was that was shown um, I'll show you the whole question again you've got uh, information presented in T account format and columnar format I'm going to continue with the columnar format uh, situation decrease this amount $2,400 down to $2,000 you can see it's a credit balance therefore if you use uh, your debits and credits logic I must 
debit the BV Vision for that output debt account by $400 to get it down to $2,000 here. So that's the, the quick way, uh, the adjusting way that I'm going to show you. Alternatively, um, you could uh, reverse the 2400 all of it, by crediting, um, by debiting provision for doubtful debts and crediting bad and doubtful debts for 2400 and putting the new amount in. Okay, I'm just going to show you the adjusting entry. It's quicker um, and also makes a lot of sense. So I need to I need to debit this account by $400 to get that down to 2000. That's what the questions are asking. All right. So the entry that you've got to make is to debit provision um, for doubtful debts um, for $400, and I've got to um, credit bad and doubtful debts for $400. Right. I'm just going to put that information back into um, the into up here. So um, just to make sure that this is right, so $400 there, it's a debit to this credit balance that's going to bring this back down to $2,000 credit. Um, another way this question could have been asked, what is the final amount um, in your bad and debt for doubts account? So um, we could have had this, okay, so we had to credit that amount, therefore the, the final balance would have been 2600 uh, debit. Right. There, that's another twist to the story if you like. Okay, um, But to answer the question, this is what you had to do. I've just given you some extra um, scaffolding to work that out independently. What it's also asking you in part B is that why has $300 been debited to the GST clearing account? Um, and that's shown here. So why has that been done so? So um, like with the earlier um, analysis, analysis of transaction type entries that I showed you before, I'm going to reconstruct now. Juicy clearing was debited by $300 and the credit is accounts receivable of control. So what I've done here, this is just on the scrap piece of paper, um, I've got GST clearing debit and account super control credit. Now um, the reality will be that it will be in context of either cancelling a sale right, or more likely the sale that you originally made has gone bad or the debt that is owed to you has gone bad. So it could be in this situation here and you would be familiar with this type of entry in relation to um, declaring a bad debt. So in this instance you can understand that GST clearing we must then debit uh, GST clearing to uh, decre decrease the amount of uh, tax that we originally thought we were going to pay when we made the sale. So this is um, uh, decreasing our liability that we have to um, our, the, the tax office. Okay. So the answer would be to to reverse um, a sale or recognize um, the recognize the um, rebate or the credit the rebate for GST clearing in this instance so is debited in this case. Right. So what I've shown you in, in this video um, is in the first instance doing the general journal entries um, and have a look at some other exams as well to see what the commonalities are and some of the questions will be different from year to year but you should have a whole list um, of different types of general journal entries to revise for. And in question four, you either get one of these three types of questions which I've just shown you in this video. Hopefully that's been useful to you.